So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I think we'll get started here. Uh, we're here in uh, Toronto. This is a live stream, so uh, there's a mic that Dave is uh, wearing right here that's going live to YouTube. Um, and uh, so if you say anything out there, your voice probably will pick up. I, I welcome all questions or anything. I just want to tell everybody that it is live onto YouTube and it stays onto YouTube afterwards. So, um, My name is uh, Constable Scott Mills. I'm a Toronto Police Service Officer. I'm currently assigned to work in the uh, Corporate Communications uh, Bureau at Toronto Police Headquarters. And my job title is Social Media Officer. So uh, what, what you're uh, seeing up here uh, right now is uh, our website, uh, the Toronto Police uh, website, tps.om.ca. And uh, I'm going to talk today about uh, social media and uh, using it to save and improve lives. I'm also going to touch on how Toronto Police use uh, social media for an emergency, for emergency management. And I'm hoping that we can get into a good dialogue here. And at some point we're going to turn this uh, video off and uh, we're going to uh, have a, an open and honest discussion about what we're talking about here that's not going out live. So um, I, I reached out when I was asked to speak at Canadian Safe Schools Network Conference here today. Um, I've, I think I've spoken here probably about eight or nine times out of the 17 times that this conference has, uh, has happened. And it, it's different all the time. Uh, my topic is usually saving and improving lives using relationships and technology. Uh, so we're on the same theme, but, but the, um, the message remains consistent and has remained consistent over the, the 10 years that I've been doing this. And that it, it's, it's really simple that we have to engage with relationships uh, with our, our students and, and our kids and, and our community members for success, and we have to do it for safety. Uh, I've never changed from that message, and uh, I've had Dave with me a number of times. Uh, he's standing beside me here. Uh, he's going to take the first 10 minutes of this because I really want to get some impact from somebody who I feel is a true hero. Uh, Dave Bradley is going to do the first 10 minutes, followed by me going into how I connect with Dave uh, as a school safety hall monitor at Earl Haig Secondary School in downtown Toronto. Uh, actually, it's up, up in northern north part of Toronto, Midtown, I guess they'd call it. And... Um, uh, it is the largest populated high school there is in Canada. Uh, since Facebook started, so 10 years ago, uh, Dave has been friending students in his job walking the halls at the school as a school safety hall monitor. And uh, I, I'm proud to stand beside him at such a prestigious event like this with people from across Canada to say that he has saved 20 lives in one school in 10 years. By basically, in a nutshell, being friends with the kids on social media, uh, and when I say friends, I mean friends on Facebook, and doing his job walking the halls and being concerned and caring about the students in his school. And his latest story uh, is, is as, as powerful as our keynote lunch speaker here, which was Amanda Todd's mother, who, who uh, a young teen who killed herself after posting a video, and I think it had close. The video has close to 30 million views on it. But we were too late. Video. We, I mean, parents, teachers, uh, all types of uh, law enforcement officials. We didn't find that that young lady's call for help until she was dead, and now her mom comes and she's telling us all about the hurt and the misery. So I really want to inspire everybody here to feel as inspired as Dave and I are, and I know we all are, to actually go out and use relationships and technology to save and improve uh, the lives of the people that we're dealing with. We can't change the world, but we can change our world. And um, I have uh, actually did up a little bit of a blog for today that includes um, uh, Carol's message at lunch on a live YouTube feed, so if you want to go back and read it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you where that is. Uh, it's already live. We're going to put this video on that blog, so every single thing that we're talking about here, including lawyer Eric Rohr, who's the top internet and education lawyer there is in Canada, hands down, uh, including what he was saying today about risk management and what we need to do to incorporate social media to save and improve lives, 
his talking points, his presentation slides are on the, the blog post. It's designed basically to inspire people, give some people the tools to actually do what Dave Bradley does. On more than one occasion, um, Dave and myself have been subject, uh, as a police officer in his role, subject to, to stress. And I'll just leave it at that, internal stress from, from, uh, from the agencies we work with. And it, it's, not a, it's not a bad thing. It, it's when things are changing and, and you're kind of part of that change, sometimes you, you're, you're a risk to your, to your managers. And there's no doubt that Dave and I have been a risk, but there is no doubt that he has saved 20 people's lives, 20 kids' lives. And it's best to hear from him uh, what's happening. As he speaks, he's just going to kind of come over where I am so he's on camera. I'm actually going to share Dave's Facebook profile into the YouTube video so you can see it while he speaks and, and while he tells you the story for 10 minutes. Right afterwards, I am going to switch completely in to what we're doing in Toronto Police to connect with people like Dave and the community uh, to, to save and improve lives and how we actually manage an emergency. So the first part of the video you'll get hopefully inspired. Second part of the video will be hands on how are Toronto Police doing it. And I'm hoping at the end that if you walk out of the room you say, wow, this is pretty easy, let's do it. And, and, and you'll have some resources and tools at your fingertips to try and make the changes. Because Amanda Todd, her mother today, how many, how many people heard frustration? A lot of everybody's shaking their heads. I heard frustration in A, that her daughter's dead, and B, that it wasn't detected before it happened. And I don't think anybody in this room wants to sit in that, in, in that spot. I know I don't as a father, as a police officer, and the more we can talk about this and make the necessary changes, so that the better. So I'll turn it over to Dave, and uh, Dave, you can tell your story, and I'll just work on here to try and get things up and running. Okay. So, um, mostly my story ends well, um, with a few twists and turns along the way. Uh, tell me, um, there are many administrators here. Yes. I have nothing against administrators. Just keep that in mind. It's on occasion, some still don't get it that um, Facebook has a role in helping and being helpful and safe. What I do at the school most of the time, oh, by the way, what Scott's doing now is, and I'm an art school, oh, it's gone. Um, last night on the Ron James show, I was in a quick skit, and, and I got into that because of some kid at the, it's a long story, but anyway, so now I'm a member of Actor and I act once in a while. So, um, not intentional, just happens. And, and my hair is like this so that I get roles in horror movies and things. So, last year, um, actually, I'll start with the good part of the story. La just this past weekend, there's a girl who used to be at our school who, if you look down on there a little bit, Scott, on my Facebook, I shared a picture. She had a baby boy, which um, if everything had gone as it might have last year, she would have frozen to death on the street back in, I think it was January of last year. But she did not. And the reason she did not is because... Um, of my role on Facebook as well as other things and like my whole thing about building these relationships online it's all based on the fact that I'm at the school and every day I see them and this girl who is new to the country new to the school I really didn't know her at all but I just you know I'd open doors I'd say hi how you doing and you know little by little as things were developing I became one of her people so oh there so um, in the midst of all that, it ended up that she was having some, looks much better on here, this is very dark, um, she was having a lot of issues and she went missing a couple of times and one time they were just about I think to do an Amber Alert and uh, I went to my Facebook in one of the offices and signed on and it, it, it would have been a perfect movie moment because I literally I was on there looking, is there any posts, is there anything, is there something, just anything to grasp onto, nothing, and I was just moving my hand up with the mouse to sign off when there was a beep and it was her. <coughs> so anyway, she wouldn't really tell me much what she did say she would be coming in that afternoon and uh, they, anyway, we, other people do their thing after that and, and you know, she was a very much a work in progress, she'd been in and out of the hospital, she'd been cutting herself, all kinds of things, it was just 
ongoing. But finally, um, it all came to pass that in January, um, she had gone into the hospital. They had sent her home very quickly, and which was not supposed to happen. I thought, okay, we're good for the weekend. When I was walking along in the hall and somebody from the office paged me and said, there's a call for you. And I said, oh. So I was near the art room. I took it there and it was her and I was shocked and stunned. First of all, that they had passed it on to me, but also that she was out. But she definitely did not want to go home at all. Um, and I didn't know exactly what to do, but I said, well, um, she threw, and when I say these things, everybody all, everybody at the school knows this, like the social worker knew everybody. She had a number of people's cell numbers. She had mine, um, also, you know, email, Facebook, everything. So I talked to her for a bit then. I didn't know exactly what I suggested, that she, you know, try to go home. There were, there were shelters. There was this. But it, anyway, later in the night, of course, she wrote, and obviously it wasn't happening. Now, as soon as this had happened, I did go into my principal's office and, and basically said, what the hell? Why was I, like, they, you, like, they didn't want me to be the person. I really didn't want to be the person, but I didn't want, you know, things to go poorly. But here they are passing on this call. And I'm like, what, what? Like, you, you, you don't want me to do this, but here I am. I'm stuck in the middle. So I said, look, over the weekend, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'll keep you posted. So Friday night came, and she didn't have a place. And there was a girl who would, but then her mother wouldn't let her. But we did finally find a, a family that would take her for two days. And, and the girl said, yeah, yeah, sometimes we take in strays. So they took her in. But then Sunday came, and she was out of there about noon. And she sent me a couple of messages, and, and she called, and... Um, it was obvious she wasn't finding anywhere and she didn't really want to go to a shelter and I didn't know what to do. So I finally, um, by the way, in the midst of this, I was sending my administration, hello administrators, messages throughout the whole time. This is what's happened. This is what she said. This is where we're at. And finally, I put out just an, a call on Facebook with no real terribly helpful information to anybody. It's just, hi, student on the street. We need help. Anybody, can anybody help? Within 20 minutes, I had three offers. One was a boy in student council's family. One was a member of the Leon of the Leon furniture chain that I know quite well, who said, "You know where we live. Send her over." And the other was a family at the school who's lived quite close, and I think the father's a doctor. And you know, it just anyway, they seemed to be the best, and also they were right ready. But we didn't know where she was, and this was about seven o'clock. And we waited and waited, and I kept sending messages saying, well, I don't know. And they said, well, you know, we're ready. At 11.01, when I was just about to say, well, I'm going to sleep, she phoned. And um, I got onto Facebook with the family that had offered, and they immediately jumped in their minivan, and they headed off to get her. So I remember I was sitting in front of my computer. I had her on, she was on a pay phone. I had her on my one cell phone. I had the mother on my other cell phone, because she, she was driving there, and I was sending pictures through Facebook to the daughter who was sitting next to her mother on her phone so that they knew who they were actually going to get. And at one point, the girl said, oh, I think they're here. And I said, no, they're not here. I know they're not here. Don't go near that car. So anyway, she was cold. She was shivering. Um, but they did get her. And actually, they kept her for two weeks. And um, you know, things were better after that. Now, um, that was just about a year ago. Sadly. I think the person who is really not recovered as well as others from all this is me because the next Monday, thinking I was going in and this would be sort of thought to be perhaps good, um, I found I was thankful eventually not to be disciplined for helping, um, which I, it still boggles my mind because had things not gone well, um, who knows, maybe the mother of that girl would have been standing up there with... Carol, Todd, saying, so this is how things didn't go well. So anyway, uh, now, this girl, really, the whole thing I cared about is that she is alive. Now, is the fact that she's had a baby right now probably the bestest thing? Maybe, maybe not. But she's alive to make whatever choices and perhaps mistakes or perhaps not mistakes. I don't know. But she is alive. Thanks a lot, Dave. Um, appreciate you coming out today. Big hand of applause for uh, Dave. Um, I think the message that I just took from Dave's uh, 
uh, story was that Facebook was kind of the lifeline to the person that was in crisis, even if it was after hours. You with me there? Um, and for me, I, I know I know professionally that creates some issues for managers and people making policies and procedures. Um, we, we have to get over those issues because it's much better for Dave's scenario to occur in the evening than it is to have somebody commit suicide in your school and deal with the trauma for that forever. How, how many people are with me there? So there are ways that we can do this and I'm hoping that we can actually get into some of those ways uh, um, as, as we go forward here today. So I'm, I'm going to save that for the end. Uh, I've, I've been doing a blog for about as long as I've known Dave. The address of it is successandsafety.com. So you can go back and see uh, 10 years of passion on this issue out there. And like I said, the message has never changed. Uh, it's always been we have to have a paradigm shift and allow relationships on social media and leverage social media for success and safety with purpose and process in order to get the payoff and the potential. And that doesn't look like every single teacher being friends with kids. It doesn't look like somebody like Dave having to work all night long on something like this. It looks, uh, it, what it looks like is actually investing in some structures that have real live professional people available and network with the right people after hours. And, and right now, after hours means that it's a 911 call to the police and it lands on the police's lap. And we're left to, to clean up a lot, of the, a lot of the mass, which when you get to work as an educator or as a social worker on Monday morning is, is a mess on your plate. So uh, it's just preventive. And uh, so what, what I'd like to, to show you here, um, and uh, again, I'm going to try and sh share a screen here for the purpose of the video, is I'm just going to our, new, our uh, website, tps.on.ca, and I'm just going into this little thing here. Uh, as soon as the website pops up, I'm going to show you how our website works as Toronto Police. And uh, I'm very proud of the work that Toronto Police has done in social media. In fact, today, if you look in the Dallas Morning Star from Dallas, Texas, there's an article that, that uh, says that uh, Dallas Police is embracing this whole social media concept. And that there's only one other police service out there that, that, that matches it, and that's Toronto. Well, uh, that, that's a huge compliment to have in the Dallas newspaper, but I really think we have a lot to work a lot of work to do as well and I think if you talk to anybody in our organization we have a lot to, a lot of work left to do so this is all a work in progress but it all starts with somebody caring to say we actually need to address this and we and we need to make it work so uh, this is all about inspiring here today so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in there and I'm gonna try and share this screen once again into the uh, into the video and I'm on Google Plus Hangouts on air in case anybody was uh, was interested on that and what I'm doing is uh, I'm just trying to go up and actually uh, hit screen share so what you're seeing in the room actually goes on to the YouTube video. Whoops, there we go. Hopefully it's going to work. If not, it was a good try. Yep, it's going to work. <laughs> so we're sharing the Toronto Police website now into the YouTube video and now I'm on the Toronto Police and when I move that it should go on the YouTube video so you can use this for reference in the past. So. All of our communities, including probably people in this room, are are there are engaged in social media or they're not. Um, some of us are engaged in our personal lives and not in our professional lives because we're told in our professional lives by our employer and by our, our unions not to do it. Um, how many people are in that uh, situation? Just a show of hands. How many, how many people uh, actually use social media in their personal life but do not, by policy, cross over into using social media in their professional life. One, two, all right. How many are using social media in their professional life? Wow, that's really good. <laughs> um, because before, it was completely the other way. So we have more people in this room at the Canadian Safe Schools Networks Conference that are actually using social media in their professional life. So things are happening. <laughs> Um, can I ask you to shout out just um, 
where you work or that's happening at, so we know. Yes? Peel District School Board? BYOD, which means bring your own device in all schools. Anybody else? Halifax and School District, common that we use social media and we engage with the kids. Is there a policy in place? So no policy, but Okay. You can access those from the service within the school, and they're used with the, to communicate with school to the community and like. Are you able to be friends with the students like Dave is? No. No. No, that is absolutely impossible. It's That's not so much board policy; it's a union. It's a union policy saying you can't be friends with the kids. The the big part about being friends with the kids in a professional context is you actually get to see their online life, so you can actually do the interventions in a timely way when it happens, um, but then it creates all these issues about, oh, somebody's going to say that I'm a groomer. Well, can you stand up again, Dave? I don't think anybody can say that that man right there is a groomer. <laughs> um, and it's a bit of a play on words, but that's one of Dave's lines. Um, if you're not, uh, what we talked about, what was talked about by the lawyer this morning is if you know about something in risk and risk management, and, and it's my humble opinion that if you're not out there with a strategy to see the one that is a groomer and it happens, somebody's going to come and say, tell you why weren't you in, these day, in this day and age. Because you should be out there to be able to see somebody like Amanda Todd posting that YouTube video and be able to act on it and save her life. Are, are you with me there? So legal paradigm shift uh, for responsibility. And all that's written out and was said once again in general terms, not specific into social media, but I asked the question in Eric Rower's session, does this apply to social media? And his answer was, yes, of course it does. It's everything. It's everything. So if you think about that, we ne really need to build this in. And there are, there are ways to do it. So is there anybody else here that professionally they're using it? Yes? I'm a vice principal in Whitehorse, Yukon, and in fact, the administrators are the only ones who have access to Facebook in the school for those rooms. I think that's uh, what we should be able to. So administrators in Yukon have access to Facebook, and are they allowed to be friends with the kids? We're advised not to be. We're advised not to be. Advised not to be. Okay. How many people are in the we're advised not to be friends with most people? Is there anybody here besides Dave that's actually being friends with kids in a professional context? Over and above advice. You're doing it over and above advice. Anybody else over and above advice? So most people, it's fair to say, as a blanket statement in this room, by policy are not allowed to friend kids on social media for the purpose of their success and their safety. Blanket statement? By policy or advice. By policy or by advice? Yep. And this is just to clarify. I have never asked anybody intentionally to be my friend on Facebook. They come to me. I, just by being in the halls, I'd be available, I'd be around. When they found out I was on, because some kid asked me to join, suddenly, and over the years, it's now closing on about 4,500 people. But unless I'm tricked by some of their little Facebook things about, oh, you know, suggested, or I'm, I'm tired and I don't know this, I don't request anybody <coughs> to be my friend. But I have students and parents and teachers and all kinds of people who asked me, and I say, okay. Your Facebook page, do you just use it for that purpose, or do you have your own personal friends and posts and things on there to make it too? There's other stuff on there, a, but really it's, it's like I have a little guy, and, and the school was all part of when he came along. It's like I, I don't, like I don't go out, I, I, like there's no pictures of me drinking a beer or, right. or, or doing whatever there. It's right. usually like, here's a cool sunset, here we are. My, my son the other day, we did a little video, and he said, we don't stop on the train tracks. I said, why? Because if a train comes, we'll die really bad. And people think it's so. 
I don't have stuff on there that I wouldn't want the kids to see. So what, what, I, what we're doing in Toronto Police is, is we've actually, when I first started using social media in 2004 as a police officer, I combined that whole world personal and professional. I'm at the point now where I strongly advocate not to do that. Right? So have a clear policy that creates boundaries about what's acceptable, what's not, and distinguish between personal and professional. Okay, Dave does not do that. When I first started, I didn't do that. Uh, I have now switched over to actually doing that. Um, having said that, every once in a while, there'll be a comment about your personal life that comes on there, and, and, but I don't get into any depth with my personal life on my professional accounts. We adapted a Toronto Police social media strategy about three years ago. It's called Social Media for Communications for Toronto Police. Um, essentially, what can happen is... This is where it gets a little bit compl complicated because Dave being friends with kids in the school and his job is one thing, but then a cop being friends, how is that going to work? And everybody told me when I first started doing this, nobody's going to want to be your friend. Well, you can only have 5,000 friends on Facebook, and I quickly was at my limit on, uh, on there because I was always out doing things with the, with the community. Uh, and people came to me. I very rarely actually reach out and ask somebody to be a friend on anything. They, they come to me. And when they come to me, we just engage in dialogue. And a, a lady that I heard talk once, her name's Liz Strauss. Uh, she's out of Chicago. She, she said, think of this principle. Talk to the people that are already listening, and your influence will grow. And that's the whole premise. I, I didn't realize at the time when I heard her say that, that the last 10 years, that's kind of what I've embraced. And I think that's what Dave embraced. So just be you um, with some purpose and process, and people will come to you. They'll also come to you when there's something that needs to be done. Yes? I think, um, like I know in, in our school, there's like a principal, but like just, you know, it's not it's personal. Mm -hmm. Yep, text is huge. And then, and then communication for sure. Like a Northern Creek teacher has her class set up, and that's the only way you can get like communication to them. So that's the only thing that they'll really check, and for sure, that's going to get so it's, a, it's been really useful that way. So it helps you keep relevant. Yeah. Keeps you in touch with, with the kids, both for their success for education purposes and for safety. That's why I like. That's why I call my blog success and safety. That's the concept of it. Once you get the concept. On it, and you got a policy. I'll show you how this works for emergency management if you're dialed in. I'm completely dialed in as Toronto Police Social Media Officer to 262 police officers and civilian members of Toronto Police that have taken a two day course showing them the purpose and the process how to use social media on, for communications. And when I say social media, I mean Twitter, uh, Facebook page or profile. Uh, you're allowed to use a Google Plus if you want, which is what we're using right now. Uh, generally, most of the uh, users go out and use Twitter and Facebook. Uh, YouTube is huge. I'm a big YouTube user. Um, I think I've got over 4,000 videos on YouTube that both celebrate <laughs> success and promote safety. Because if you ask somebody to go on YouTube, doesn't matter how old you are, everybody goes on YouTube. So it's, it's often overlooked as a social media site, but it is a very good way to connect with people. Um, so um, Instagram is huge right now. I think probably in the near future we'll be in implementing Instagram. Toronto Police has an official Instagram now. It's not on the website. So my advice is if you are going to get a strategy to actually implement it into your website and drive all traffic to your website. So today, in order to not confuse you, everything that I've written down from the lawyer, from Carol, from what's going on here today is going on my blog, successandsafety.com. Everything for emergency management I want you to go to tps.on.ca. So just two websites, that's all you got to walk out of here with, and I'll show you how the Toronto Police one works, especially for emergency management. So the idea of actually building social media engagement uh, without a crisis, so every day, success, is that you have a whole bunch of people already listening to your message, and when there's a, if and when there's a crisis, you have a whole audience that you can get an official source message out to. That's, that's the bottom line. So on the uh, Toronto Police website, we'll post up a story which we just did about awards celebrate community for Black History Month. 
and people can actually share that and things like that. Right here, if you go to Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube, it'll take you to the official Toronto Police um, uh, social media accounts that are all Toronto Police. As you scroll down here, this is my favorite part of the website, it says connect with us in social media. So once you've taken the course, you go on to this list. So if you tweet, so right now, if I were to actually, I took a picture of Dave, I could actually tweet something, or I could post it onto Facebook from this device, and it will go into this loop of every single officer or civilian employee that's allowed to use that. So it's a great way to improve internal communications, and it's a great way to improve external communications, and the same rules of conduct apply to the police officer in, as they do as you're out walking the street and talking to somebody. So if you, if you, if you say something inappropriate on social media, you, you will find yourself in trouble, just like if you said something inappropriate on the street. Chances are you got a lot bigger um, chance of somebody catching it if you put it on social media because it's so public. So, uh, very interesting. Every time we upload a YouTube video, it automatically ingests right into the website. When we do a press conference from Toronto Police Headquarters, which is the office I work with, our video services unit does what's called YouTube Live, which is essentially what I'm doing right now with a webcam, except it's using an HD uh, video feed and it's using a, a codec system, but it's the same back-end feed to YouTube, and it goes right to YouTube Live, and then it stays on the same link. And then what we do is we just come in and we chop the start and chop the finish so that it's a nice little package. And what we do now is we also caption the videos because um, the uh, disability uh, and accessibility uh, laws in Ontario say that uh, the videos have to be captioned. So there's an there's a actual spot in YouTube where you can have automatic captions, we find that they don't accurately caption. So we've taken some guidelines from the Canadian Hearing Society um, as to how you do all this. And there's a spot on there in YouTube where you can actually go in and actually add a transcript that's written out or to create your own and just listen and type. So all that's done and it goes into here through our, through our team. Then you come to the issue of legitimacy and um, that I'm just clicking on view more um, or connect with us in social media here and I'm trying to bring up uh, the page where it actually houses everybody and where they work and how you can connect with them on Facebook or, or, or Twitter. And so at the top, um, one of our uh, deputy chiefs, Peter Slowly, um, is really active out there on, on Twitter and things like that and, and Facebook and he's the one who kind of championed its use and, and uh, Chief Blair said you know what there's a conversation going on out there we need to be involved in all this so uh, everybody is, is, is listed on there. Um, the value of something like this is in an emergency and this is the a key part for an emergency is you can tell anybody in Toronto, if there's an emergency, to go where to look for official source information from the police? Where would you send them? Anybody? tps.on.ca and check out and see what's being said in that online social feed. Because what we're doing on the back end is through corporate communications, we're kind of reaching out to people in the field. So Dave might have a school resource officer at that's actually assigned to his school, which I believe you do, not anymore. Um, but he would, he would actually um, be able to have contact with a police officer in the area. So one of the officers in the area could be responding to a scene where there is some urgent need to get some message out. If they're a social media user, they'll contact us, like the regular procedure in corporate communications, saying this is what we got, or we'll call them, because if it is an emerging situation, we usually find out about it in corporate communications from the media before we do from our own people half the time. Um, we'll establish a, a back-end contact with the scene supervisor and the person in charge, and we will start putting information out. Our, our, primary, our primary spot for putting information out to get it out quickly and effectively is on the Toronto Police Twitter account. 
But if we do have a user, say I'm an individual professional account user that's on the ground at Dave's school, and I can actually give an update, I could actually just do what I'm, uh, I'm about to do right now. I'm just going to say I'm on the Toronto Police account. So this is going out to 71,000 people that follow this account from this BlackBerry. So I, I'm just going to say thank you to uh, at CDN. Uh, no, I think it's CNDN, right? <laughs> Safe Schools. CDN Safe Schools. Um, for including Toronto Police in your Safe Schools Conference conference today. And uh, I know that right here, I got this guy right here who's a, a guy that I got good relationships in the community with. And uh, can you come up here for a sec, Chris? All I'm going to do is do the old selfie thing here. <laughs> come on over here. We're just going to go like this, and we're going to take a picture. And tweet. And we're going to tweet it. So in an emergency, we can do something as quickly and easily as that um, on there. Now, CSSN2014 is the hashtag for this event. And I, when we have multiple people on the account, because it can't be 24-7, it's just too much work. So there's multiple people. I've used up all my 140 characters here. And I just hit send. And that picture of Chris and myself is now going on to Twitter to 71,000 people, and it's going to pop up as soon as it ingests into that website. You'll see that right up in there that that tweet's going to come right into there. And that's how we're updating the public um, when there's an emerging situation. So if a school goes into lockdown or hold and secure, and we get that information, it's successfully tweeted now. Um, hopefully, I'm just going to refresh the page here. Uh, you'll see on the feed here that uh, PC Arsenal, he's just put out youth age 13 to 18 in Scarborough, free dance lessons tonight from 4 to 6 p.m. at Cedar Brook Collegiate. Drop by. Um, and he's doing that from out in the field. And as soon as that ingests, you'll see police that comes into this loop that says thanks to the Canadian Safe Schools Network uh, for, for coming out here. Really, 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 really effective way um, to, to communicate. Within about 30 seconds of posting something in an urgent situation from that account, uh, it's being read out on all the news radio stations, and it's, being, uh, it's out on every single... Uh, it's out on every single uh, television station. So you'll see here that this has come in um, onto the front page of the website. And I haven't even taken a look at this picture, so I hope it's right, good, Chris. Right. Really hope so. Yeah, you hope it's good. There you go. So a little bit of Chris, a little bit of Scott standing in front of the screen. And that's really, really quick, quick for emergency communications. Now, how I'd like to end the, the online portion here, we've got 20 more minutes is I'd like to actually show you for emergency management um, something called a Twitter list. H how many people use Twitter? OK, how many people use lists? Two? How many people aren't quite sure about what lists are about or how you effectively use them? OK, this is probably going to change your life for the good. How many people here with their hands up that saying they're using Twitter um, actually are in the Toronto area? The greater Toronto area, greater Toronto area. Okay, this the list that I'm about to show you are Toronto and greater Toronto area centric. So take the ice storm. Um, the vision I've had since I've started doing this uh, social media officer job, and it was about two months before G20 in 2010 that I was officially put into here. And Sergeant Tim Burrows are currently tweets. Uh, um, out of uh, 22 division and, and does a lot of good stuff down there. He actually was a big part of this as well. Um, 
and there's a whole team of people now involved in all, all this. Um, but uh, when we um, uh, when we first started, um, we weren't really using lists effectively. And at, when we first started, a lot of people weren't using Twitter, like our partners. Now it's like a common hailing frequency for anything to do with an emergency management because of these lists. So going forward, we're hoping to have what's called the Toronto Police Operations Center. Uh, we're hoping to have that up and running this year. They will actually have 24-7 coverage, and these lists will be part of that kind of operational section. Uh, and so what, what does that mean? We're now on Twitter. So how would you find Toronto Police Twitter if you're not a Toronto Police Twitter user? We're very proud of the fact we have 74,000 followers. But, you know, um, we just had a, a, a young man come into uh, 52 Division the other day, uh, not too long ago. And when you look at the fact that this young man here has 49.8 million followers, is having 71,000 followers really a big deal? <laughs> Let's put it into perspective here, right? We're just a little fish in a big pond, okay? But when, when this gentleman decides that they're coming to your house for a visit, you best get on your social media tools. <laughs> because this gentleman brings 40.8 million people along with them, okay? So um, how would you find the Toronto Police Twitter account when you walk out of this room? Off your website. Off your website. Drive everything back to the website. What's the website name again? tps.on.ca. Brand new. We've got brand new uh, background uh, branding logos on all of our Twitter accounts that say tps.on.ca. That's how you identify as us. You go there and it's like an emergency. I think you could go down here if you're not a user and actually view more and see what everybody's tweeting in the last 24 hours real quick. The best way probably if you're a Twitter user and you're logged into your Twitter is to hit that Twitter button, go to the account, and I'm going to tell you where the lists are. A list is where you can see what everybody's saying, and I love lists for lockdowns, hold and secures, anything to do with a daycare or anything like that, because Toronto District School Board, Toronto Catholic District School Board, CS Vion, uh, all the French ones, uh, they all are in this loop. Essentially, when you go to a list, you can create a list on your Twitter account, or you can subscribe to a list. So I created a list on here for ride spot checks. There's six people that are on there that actually put out a lot of information about keeping our city safe with ride spot checks. This is SMEM, means Social Media Emergency Management. And for the last two years, I've done Social Media Emergency Management for the air show. So there's all the partners on the air show. So one-time event, so that's not really of too much interest to you. Caribbean Carnival is the uh, yearly festival. Uh, that comes to, to Toronto, and I think it, between that and Pride, it, it attracts probably the biggest crowds into Toronto annually. Um, so there's, there's a list for that. That's all people on the front end. Honda Indy, if a car crashes at the Indy, you want to kind of know what's going on in social media, so put everybody on a list and figure out what everybody's saying, who everybody is. This is SMEM Toronto Sports, which means if you're going to go to a major professional sporting event in Toronto, all the, all the people that are tweeting like Go Transit or TTC or the OPP or all the people that will have information that will give you updated information to safely get to or from a game, plus the people that tweet at the game themselves are on that list. So if you're going to a game, it's great to, to be a subscriber of that list. World Pride 2014, um, starting up a list. World Pride that's going to come this year. Just creating a buzz, getting out there for success, getting out there for safety. Uh, just being in the game allows you to know what's going on. You can create private lists. Um, got suicide risks. Sometimes people tweet suicide. <laughs> they tweet suicide. You might want to be able to check that list quick if you know who they are and figure out who they are and actually try and help them before something drastic happens. Is that a list that everybody needs to know who's on it? No, keep it private. Right? So great great way to, 
to, to manage things. This is, if you want to find a police officer in your area, this has 278 members. These are authorized Twitter accounts of the Toronto Police Service. TPS, so you can just click on it and subscribe to it. This media list here, and I'll just try and make this a little bit wider here for you. Move the screen over. Some of these, like that TPS list is, how, is created by the Toronto Police account. This one here, Transit Safety Officers, is created by Go Transit, and we've just subscribed to it so it's on our list. And what we do is we tweet back and forth with the Go Transit Safety Officers every day, putting out little safety information. Sometimes we're joking about somebody's birthday cake or something like that. It gets fairly, fairly loose and, and fun sometimes. But the bottom line is when it's game on, we've got that whole list of people that we can, we can reach out to get information from and actually send information and they're listening to it immediately. So it helps you coordinate. This media is 196 members. I created it on the Toronto Police Duty Desk account, which will eventually hopefully become the Toronto Police Operations Center account. And that's any individual or, or um, media outlet that affects anything to do with Toronto. So you can click on that list and see what everything's being said and tweeted by all the media. And this list here is the one that I'm really interested in you actually saying, you know what, that's a good list for me and my role to hit subscribe on. Social Media Emergency Management Toronto Official. Again, the last one is Grey Cup 2012. This was created by Officer Shauna Coxon, um, who is, was tasked on that day in 2012 to do front-end social media engagement with a team of officers at the Grey Cup. So I left the list live so you, you can see there's 35 members that were actually tweeting together for the Grey Cup as a, as, a training, as a training tool. But this list right here, when you click on SMEM, Toronto Official, if you get up in the morning and you want to know if the school buses are running, if you want to know um, if the schools are open or closed, if you want to know if the roads are slippery or something like that, if you want to know if the TTC is broken down, um, you actually can go in and look at every single one of these people and it'll all come in and give you uh, what, what they're saying at that time. So one time, not too long ago, there was a Rogers uh, outage for cell phones, right? Big deal. You couldn't dial 911 from your cell phone. Well, people need to know that 911 service on their cell phone isn't available, so we would wait for Rogers to put something out about what the heck's going on and then we'd see it on that news feed and we just put it out to our, our followers so everybody could know and you can get the information out quicker. So for, for reading the newspaper, uh, you can do it on here now <laughs> on that list. You can click on the Toronto Media list. You can see everything and breaking time whenever you want and you don't have to follow everybody. You don't have to follow 280 some cops to actually see what 280 some cops are doing when you decide you want to check out what they're doing. And I'd suggest on your agency Twitters that you start making lists like that with your different community partners that are relevant to your organizations and actually teach people to put them on the list. Um, what I like to do is actually put them right on, each phone works differently. Um, I, I use an Android and a Blackberry. Um, iPhones are great too. Any phone is good as long as it works, it's got a data plan. Figure out on your Twitter application where the list button is and what application works better for you and how to, how to actually manage your lists and, and, and look on them. So I'm on duty. I'm the Toronto Police Social Media Officer right now. So I'll just, in closing, I'll show you how I'm kind of keeping in track by doing two things at once because we all have to do two things at once in our busy lives is I've been up here talking for an hour. Anything could have happened in an hour. My phone just rang, which causes me concern because only certain people for emergencies have that, but I wasn't in a position to answer it. But what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to look on my back end communications team that are up and working in the office and plugged in and see if there's anything on our back end emergency management list. So I can tell just by looking at my BBM, there's no BBM messages, that means there's nothing really going on there. 
just to be sure, I go on to all my emails, because sometimes I'll come out on an email, and I just scroll down there, and there's nothing in red coming through. That means nobody's pinned. That means probably we're good. <laughs> so we're all calm. Next thing I want to do is I want to become situationally aware with what all the Toronto police officers are doing on social media, because that's my job, is I'll flip over. I'm using Uber Social on here. I'll flip over to the lists, which are up on a bar right there, and I'll bring up the uh, Toronto Police uh, list that you're seeing right here, and I will actually look and see what everybody's saying on there, and then you can either share from there or, or reply back to them and engage back to them. And it makes life a lot easier because a lot of people that don't use social media say, oh, the phone is controlling me. It's buzzing all the time, right? I can't sleep at night. I'm afraid to turn it off. Well, well, don't let the phone control you. You control the phone. And because all the news seems to break on Twitter and then fall on Facebook, dial in Twitter for all your community partners on, and what you're doing on there. And then be friends with the guys like Dave that has all the relationships down in. Because you know that Dave is looking after his little piece of the pie. And if he needs something and he needs to go listen to what we're doing or knows who's working that day or who to connect with, it's coming through on his Facebook. They're already friends. That guy's not working today. This guy is. I got a Facebook issue that I can work out maybe here without even getting the police to have to come. And that's what we're trying to accomplish. How many people have found this information of use to their daily lives? Yeah, it, Are people inspired to go out there and maybe do a little bit? Yeah? If you're inspired, I'm always willing to help. Um, I work off my phone. I know I'm on YouTube. My phone's out there. My cell is 647-449-2801. Um, my Toronto Police email is stop with two Ds dot mills. At torontopolice.on.ca. I work a lot off of a Gmail address, which is scottmiller with one T at gmail.com. And uh, if you said just scottmiller with two T's, it goes to somebody in Arizona that absolutely hates my guts. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm going to actually go into the, uh, the live feed here and I'm going to share uh, what we've just done. I'm going to actually unplug it, I'm going to turn the video off. We're going to say goodbye to YouTube world. I'm going to take the video and I'm going to embed it on successandsafety.com where you can actually go back and watch and share what the lawyer said, see his presentation slides. I'm going to try and see if Carol will give me her presentation slides to put up there. Um, I, I've got her videos already live on there. And uh, we can remain connected uh, for success and safety. Thanks a lot.